Hello, uh, Mary. Uh, Renault. We both know what I'm about, so no introduction needed here. Um, I wanted to uh, let you know that I just saw your post on you asking us in the community uh, what we wanted to see more of. Well, from what I saw and what I've seen so far, um, yes, it's fine and dandy to talk about the most vulnerable, but what I've seen is about mostly about children and education. And I know that that is important. Let's make that a point. It is very important for kids to get an education and for EAs to be in kids' lives, but it's heartbreaking to know that not enough emphasis was done about the adult community. As a matter of fact, there are many on PDD that are independent or semi-independent that need certain services. What happens because of all the changes that those people lose all that they have despite the fact that they need help. Then there's the other side of it. People like me. I gave up mine willingly because I was getting the wrong services. Many of us are my age and are taking a really good hard look at their future. Do you know what I see? I'm 46. I see a very bad road, a very bad negative outlook. As so many my age are starting to realize. I have less than 20 years to retirement. What happens if my husband gets sick and I have to navigate a system for which is made for average people? If my husband gets sick or dies, I will have no one. That means that my ability to navigate a system or ask for help is going to be non-existent. Now, that future scares the fuck out of me. And I don't like looking at it. I don't like seeing it. I don't want to I don't want to live it. Emotionally, I'm about 16 years old, diagnosed. If you were in my shoes, how scared would you be? Where would you be? How would you respond? It's bad enough they have de-indexed It's bad enough they um, put people in subsidized housing in a huge predicament. On one side, yes, they have a roof over their head, but some of these places, they have their own ceilings collapsing in on them. They have cockroaches, they have bed bugs, they have elevators that don't work. I mean, these are real. I've got pictures after pictures after pictures. They're living in mold and mildew. And just, you know, they say that to have good health means to have a good health system. To have a better health means to have a better life, a better quality of life. And many don't have that. I'm one of the lucky few that can say that I've had good environments to live in, but there was a time that I didn't. That was where all these people were, to say the least. I've been on jobs. That Bill 32, I know what's going to happen. Not that it doesn't happen already, but it's going to be worse. If a person has a disability and gets a job, you put more power into employers. That means they can um, berate you if you have a disability. They can, they'll hire you, but they'll give you the ugliest, dirtiest job that nobody wants to do. Without any form of 
possible moving forward or advancement there will be times where the person with the disability will be berated and let go for no reason there will be a lot of heartbreak I mean let me tell you a story when I was 23 back before the laws were as they are where employers were allowed to call you and berate you different things I mean I I worked at the Super 8 in Lethbridge many years ago and in a room barely 10 by 10 I was barely 23 and that day I had carried the weight of five people and that morning by the afternoon the head chambermaid pulled me and 12 women that worked there into a room and straight to my face in front of those 12 people called me a lazy fucking bitch needless to say I'm the type that doesn't deal with a lot of shit so I walked off the job very quickly in tears and never came back because I don't agree with what's going on Bill 32 is going to put a lot of people at a very big disadvantage especially if they have a disability because their choice would be go to work and be berated or stay at home live off age and starve that's not a choice that's not a choice anybody wants my biggest fear is that though it is COVID and the homeless are going to have nothing to go to if they should get COVID but what about those that are on their own that are semi-independent or are independent that have very little or no help as it stands and because of the changes they get nothing that breaks my heart there's not enough emphasis on adults who are independent or semi-independent who have no luxury of having natural supports. I mean, some of us are married and got children. Some of us are like me or... And when they hit old age, where is the help that they need when they need it the most? I can't navigate a system that's made for average people with average mindset, as in people without disabilities. Sure, I look the way I do, I sound the way I do, but that's because I came from person-centered programs. Most people didn't have that luxury. How are they going to navigate a system and find help for themselves when they can't understand it? I don't understand it. That's not okay. People in the disability end of things, from my end of the spectrum, so to say, are start, starting to really look at their lives, look at where they stand in life, how they see it. And many of them are just like me. And many of them are saying the same thing. What's going to happen to me when there's no one left? I can't emphasize that enough. Mary, you do a wonderful job. But I wish more emphasis was brought on for the adult community for which is disabled and semi independent or independent. Where's the help for us?